we have really uh, a transformation going on in the world and uh, higher education is not going to be the, or it doesn't seem to be at present anyway, uh, the uh, force that will shape the way uh, uh, the future is going. The way the future is going right now uh, is uh, being shaped by many, many decisions that are uh, uh, fundamental. And uh, all over the place, uh, people talk about AI and robotics and so on. They're more aware of the, the uh, IT side of it, but because I'm involved in that other side, I will tell you that the revolution in biology is going as fast, uh, even perhaps faster than people imagine in terms of uh, uh, the IT side. And when the merger of the two come together, you get breakthroughs that pose very profound questions uh, for which society as a whole, and certainly not the governing structures that exist, are ready to address the ethical and other dimensions of that. For example, uh, we now have biological robots that uh, are created from uh, uh, stem cells of uh, frogs, African frogs, and uh, they assemble them into micro uh, 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 Pac-Man looking little blobs. And now these little blobs can create their own biological robots, second generation, only one so far that we know. But I mean, just think about what we're talking about, real live biological cells that are functioning as robots in the sense of doing things uh, for humans at the instruction of humans or at the initiation of humans, and then functioning with a certain amount of autonomy. These things are happening right across the board. And uh, we have another reality, which was, I think rightly pointed out by the speakers, where the whole world, whether you're talking about climate change, whether you're talking about food security, whether you're talking about uh, access to education, whether you're talking about inequality, uh, et cetera, uh, we have a global set of problems. The pandemic is one of them, but these global sets of problems are captured partly or, or not captured partly by the fact that they require this level of global cooperation at the systemic and societal level, not just at the particular project or initiative, if they're going to have a major impact on these global trends. Uh, just to give an idea of what I'm talking about, think my friends who been served, Bob Kane and the others, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, our British friends at MIT, who invented the internet. Uh, I don't think anybody could visualize how it would totally reshape everything, from social media to uh, work patterns to banking uh, transactions to globalization and trade. Everything was being transformed. The marriage between the, the, the uh, mobile phone and the internet has created a totally new society, a, a, a highly hyperlinked society of young people. And the penetration of, uh, of the mobile phone, the handheld device, is changing the relationship between people, not just in the fact that they can text and talk to each other and so on, but also in the kinds of transactions they can do. And even in places like Kenya, for example, you would find banking being done among the poorest of the poor through mobile phones in the M-Pesa and so on. And I believe that therefore there are many profound transformation that require us to rethink uh, the way uh, we think about uh, knowledge, education, information, etc. I think data, when uh, uh, organized, becomes information. When explained, becomes knowledge. But we need more. We need wisdom. And wisdom must involve values, beliefs, uh, uh, ethics, uh, along with that. Now, I won't go through the transformative character of the knowledge, pluridisciplinarity, convergence, uh, computing, complexity, chaos, humans and machines, images and text, parsing, big, big data, internet explosion. We have to remember every human being or 
on average, 1.7 megabytes of data is created every second by every person during 2020. And uh, the internet of things, machines are beginning to talk to machines. What will that do? It is not the kind of ideal structure that we advocate within our universities that is going to dominate these very profound transformative changes. So if we go back to the function of education, what are the characteristics of the mind that we wish to nurture and cultivate? And Howard Gardner, of course, uh, in his classic Frames of Mind in 1983, uh, he talked about uh, more recently the minds of our youth that are, they need the ability to synthesize as well as to be disciplined and respectful of others creative and ethical. And ethical becomes more and more important. I just mentioned one example from the Xenobots, but from uh, life, we can now, as also already been done, apply these new biological techniques to edit human beings. And what does that do for us? So we need to have a critical and synthesizing mind endowed with imagination and creativity. And I would always strongly support a curious mind because curiosity-driven science is where the best things come from. And a disciplined and respectful mind that, that gives weight to the opinions of others, that looks for inclusion, and an ethical mind because not everything that is technically feasible is ethically desirable. And I think with that, we will have the, the ability to say to uh, what we are doing with the next generation in uh, educational framework, we are helping them to cope with the coming transformation. And that therefore the education for tomorrow is going to be very different, but it will also be remarkably remaining as it is. For the, the, the 9 billion people on the planet, schools are going to be uh, continued and very large part of formal education will take place in, in established schools and universities. And it was, has been the research excellence of the university has been a question that we know, but distance guided learning. In fact, the university of people has grown to 100,000 people in a couple of years. And uh, uh, the lifelong education for employment as people, whatever skills they have learned have to be upgraded every little while, but also the lifelong education for personal cultural enrichment. I want to attend uh, units and courses that deal with the history of art, well, I'll be able to do it online right now in ways that didn't exist before. And as we invent this new education, yes, as was said, we have to think of the content, the methods, not the authority figure in the classroom that teaches, but the, the, the methods of teaching, the participants, they will still be the families and the teachers and the, the, the friends and peers, but now we will have peers online as well as avatars and, and holograms, as well as dealing with uh, uh, the more usual units of society and also dealing with the, the structures of society that have to transform themselves, libraries, museums, archives, exhibits, as well as recognizing that the role of the mass media, which used to be television and, and, and cinema and newspapers and radio has now moved to social media where everybody is a participant and a creator as well as a recipient. But then can we think of the abolition of these obsolete structures that we have inherited from the 19th and 20th century? I don't think so. And I reason I say that is because I believe that there are five, five essential transitions uh, that occur between the ages of 15 and 24 uh, in most societies, and that make these years particularly relevant and important from high school and university years, they mediate all these transitions. Secondly, we must also, uh, uh, I think, recognize that it is unhealthy for children uh, to uh, learn simply with adults staying at home or something like that because a large part of education process is socialization. We are creating not just the amount, it's not just imparting knowledge or even imparting values. It is nurturing the individual, as was said earlier on, to be the individual and become a citizen. 
So what are these five major transitions that will continue to be mediated largely by the education system? First is the decision to continue studying, not dropping out. Second, to merge into the workforce in some way because work style, home style will be very different. Third, adopting a healthy lifestyle, not on drugs, safe sex, avoiding uh, uh, unhealthy uh, habits, starting a family, but also learning and experimenting to exercise citizenship. And to do that, we need to have create expanding opportunities, enhance the capabilities, and this is very, very important. Provide second chances. Don't say that somebody who has failed and dropped out is hopeless. No, we must find ways of applying these to every single one of these five transitions because that is how we will create a, a, a stronger group of citizens who have an ethical foundation and who can indeed look to the future, look to others who are less fortunate than themselves, and also learn and continue to flourish in a system that is driven by their own curiosity and that allows each individual to reach the full extent of their abilities and give back to society the full measure of their